The phone tap was so furtively planted and maintained in the secret agent's phone that even he, an expert in the communications field, was not aware of its presence. So uh, the idiom here is so x that y, and of course x can be something fairly complex like furtively planted and maintained, so that part's not naughty. Um, so the phone tap was so x that y. Well, that sounds pretty good. Let's check the other ones. Uh, B, so furtive was the phone tap planted and maintained. Um, here, furtive is still modifying planted and maintained. And as such, uh, it shouldn't be the adjective furtive. It should be the adverb furtively. Um, so we get rid of B. C says it was so furtive that a phone tap was planted and maintained in the secret agent's phone. Uh, it was so furtive that something happened. Uh, I think, I mean, you can have that construction in, in, in English. You would say, it was so amazing that my cousin won the lottery the other day. Um, something like that. Uh, but that's, it's kind of colloquial, and um, certainly it's passive. It was so furtive, and the GMAT doesn't like passive when it can help it. Uh, D says, a phone tap that was so furtively planted and installed, um, this actually doesn't, we don't end up with a main verb. This This whole sentence then describes the phone tap, and we don't actually have a main verb saying what happens with the phone tap, so this creates a fragment. Um, choice E, planted and maintained so furtively in the secret agent's phone, was a phone tap that, and so super uh, inverted sentence structure, planted and maintained was a phone tap. Uh, not grammatically incorrect, but certainly not clear, and uh, I mean, you know, you can get away with that when you're writing your novel, but if you're writing a business memo, the GMAT is trying to discourage this sort of thing. Choice A, correct as written, and direct, and a normal sentence structure. 